Even though I'm trying to move on in my relationship with God in this present evil age, I find that sometimes my past issues keep seeping into my current life. If you were my life coach, Mr. Law, what would you do? What would you tell me? Mr. Law is ready for you. He says, here's exactly how we would solve this situation. First of all, cut off all relationships with people who led you into sinful habits. You need a clean break with the past. Well, that makes sense. Number two, stop going to all the places that formerly led you into sin. You've got to break with all associates and all past experiences. And then number three, we're going to set up a check-in with me every day with a detailed account of your activities. You need accountability if you're going to succeed. Well, your thoughts are, that sounds pretty thorough. Let's talk to Mr. Grace, see how he would approach this situation. So you go to Mr. Grace's office. Mr. Grace says, all the activities that your first coach required have some value in helping you leave your past. One thing you notice in all your discussions with Mr. Grace is he never speaks badly about Mr. Law. He always recommends Mr. Law. He's, he's a good coach. Mr. Grace always adds something significant to it, but he never disparages Mr. Law's approach. He says some of those activities could have some value in helping you break with the past. But at best, they're just a cage. They're just a cage. Do you know what I mean by a cage? He goes on to explain to you, uh, my son-in-law is South African, and he likes to tell us stories about growing up in South Africa. And occasionally, a lion would go rogue, and they have quite a few there. And this lion, a lion would go rogue and, and actually start stalking and hunting and eating people. It's a taste for human flesh. They become man-eaters. And when that happens, of course, they have to stalk the lion. They have to capture it. And they put it in what? In a cage, right? And so imagine you're the caretaker. You can take care of this lion in the cage for 25, 30 years. And at the end of that period, you think, 25 years. This lion has not eaten one person. Obviously, this is a reformed lion. <laughs> Let's give him a chance. <laughs> right? And so you open the cage. What's going to happen? <laughs> he's going to eat you. Yeah. The first man he sees. Why? Because the cage couldn't change his nature. The cage protected you and protected him, obviously, so we'd have to kill him, but it can't change the nature. And so Mr. Gray says, all of those things have some value, but they can't change the heart. So they can't change the heart. But then Mr. Grace, what would you do to help me deal with those past issues? Well, I'd ask you some questions. Why are those old sins so appealing to you? What is it that they are providing for you? Do they give you a certain sense of identity, meaning, purpose, and joy? But how does Jesus Christ provide the real answer to those needs? We spend our time looking at the provision that Jesus Christ has made in his gospel to meet the deep needs of our heart that those old sinful patterns were trying unsuccessfully to meet. Well, that sounds pretty good. Now, your first thought is, Mr. Grace's approach seems like it's gonna take longer than Mr. Law. I like Mr. Law because, man, that's accent. We get some change right away. This grace thing might seem like it might take longer than I want. 
Let me go back to Mr. Law and let me see what he has to say about my next concern. That's my current life right now. And, and your question to Mr. Law is, how can I enjoy victory in this life that I'm living right now, my daily life? Mr. Law is ready for you. He's got a list. Read your Bible and pray one hour every day. Number two, never miss church services or especially small group meetings. Never. And witness to others often. Oh yeah, give lots of money to God too. Okay, sounds like a pretty good checklist. He says, you do those things, your current life is going to work. Move on over to the next office. Mr. Grace, now, he, Mr. Law had these things to suggest. What are your thoughts? Again, he says, all the activities that Mr. Law suggested may have some value in helping you live the Christian life. But by themselves, they'll be as effective as a husband in a troubled marriage trying to save it with a checklist on all the ways to love his wife. You see, he got this book. 52 Ways for a Successful Marriage. And it's, it's a, a how-to. It's, a, it's a, a specific. Each week they give you a specific thing to do to make your marriage better. So the first week it's uh, buy your wife flowers once a month. Okay, you put that on the checklist. And, and you know, that seemed to have some, that seemed to work pretty good. And then the next week you've got another thing to do. And you know, that seems to work pretty good too. But of course, you got to keep up the checklist from the first week. So each week, you keep adding a new thing to the list. Now it's a full-time job just to remember, did I do all the things on the stupid checklist? <laughs> and by week 37, you're so disgusted with all this checklist, you burn the checklist and just leave your wife. <laughs> A mere checklist can't put love in your heart. Yeah. He's, Mr. Gray says, my method is going to, it's going to be a little different. It's going to involve reflection and gratitude. You say, what do you mean by that? Every day, I want you to meditate and think about the cross. I want you to see the Lord Jesus Christ paying the ultimate price for your salvation. I want you to see the magnitude of your debt that required such a price. And then I want you to think about the greatness of his provision that would meet your need in the horrific death of his son. And as you do, what's going to happen Gradually, slowly, not overnight, gratitude is going to grow in your heart. And you're going to find a new love for God. And out of that love, all of those right activities are going to start to flow from a transformed and changed heart. Well, that's pretty good, but it seems like that is going to take too long. So let's go back. One last chance. Give Mr. Law. Let's talk about looking. I'm talking about my future. Now, how can I accomplish my dreams and visions? Now, Mr. Law loves this one. This is his specialty. He's excited. He's got a plan for you to create a great life. First of all, he says, I want you to make a detailed list of your goals and your dreams. Let's write them out in detail. And then every day, visualize those dreams coming to pass. I want you to see those things happening. And then we've got to get rid of all negative thinking and talking. We've got to get rid of that stinking thinking because you need a checkup from the neck up. And we need to get positivity flowing about your future dreams. You're pumped up now. You feel you were kind of swayed towards Mr. Gray, but Mr. Law got you back. Now, that's someone who believes in me. I'm excited about this coach. But one last shot you got to give Mr. Gray. He says, what do you got to say 
about my future. Mr. Grace kind of shakes his head and says, this is the hard one. Grace is going to have to work overtime to get you through this one. Because this is going to be the area of your greatest disappointment. Because most of those dreams and visions, they're going to actually have to die on the altar so that God's purpose can come to pass in your life. And that can only happen through suffering and pain. There's challenges ahead. The Apostle Paul, remember his, his altar call. God told Ananias, when you come and tell Paul the good news, tell him this, how much he must suffer for my name's sake. This is going to cost you. There's going to be pain ahead. And all of those grandiose visions of yourself are going to die. But the end result is you're going to look more like Jesus than you ever dreamed possible. Those ideas that you had when you were young that you thought you were going to just conquer the world, the thing that's going to matter the most to you is I look more like Jesus than I ever imagined it was possible. That's what Mr. Grace has to offer. You want a life coach of grace. He's going to push you back to the gospel. And he's going to push you back to the cross. That's the empowering grace of God. Radically different than the idea of free grace that it's not going to matter how you're going to live. That's a message that cuts against the grain of the culture that we live in. But that is the right choice for your life coach. Let's close in prayer.